Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Life in the Spirit. My name is David Furrow. We've got Joe Roth and Hola. we've got Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Hey, Mr. how's Miller. everybody today? We are doing good. Great. Yeah. Hey, You're Joe, great. do you yeah. know what today is? It's the 21st of September. Do you know whose birthday that is? This guy. <laughs> it's David Furrow's <laughs> birthday. It is. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy Thanks. birthday, David. All you out there, I know that David he really likes small gifts at any amount. Small yeah. denom- denominations? Yes. That's not right. Small, small bills. Small bills. <laughs> small bills, anything. He'll take it. Gold yeah. coins. As long as it's paper. Or precious metals. <laughs> oh, wow. Or precious metals. Like yeah. a ring? <laughs> oh, we went there. So, Whoa, Joe. We're, we're, we're still looking for David, so. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Anyways, let's bring it back anyway. to life in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I wanted to share a couple of things. Um, you know, Ken Roberts was here over the weekend, mm-hmm. and um, the meetings that he had were fantastic. Yeah, I thought. I mean, he is a teacher of teachers. Yeah, um, that's my opinion. Um, but you know how it is when you listen to a speaker, and there's those little nuggets of truth that. Um, he says, you grab on to, and then that's all you hear the whole meeting. Yeah. It was one of those meetings for me, and it was a small yeah. truth, but it was a truth that impacted me through the whole week. And um, I think, you know, one of these, what I would like to do in this episode is uh, maybe we can do a little bit of backtracking from our very beginning, but then we can go to present and then forward, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that, uh, for me, Ken, what I, I heard him um, say, and it, it was a truth, but it was a personal thing for him as he was talking about he just wants to be kinder, and that's how the Lord mm-hmm. is dealing with him. Mm-hmm. And um, to me, it just impacted me when he said that. I thought, oh, that's kind of silly or goofy. You know, why do we need to be kinder? And uh, he talked about his wife. Remember the testimony he gave about his wife and the driving of the car and in, in road rage? And, you know, I thought, well, that's even sillier. But then after church, driving home, <laughs> it was like, oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit's working on you. <laughs> but it is the truth, Joe. I mean, it was the absolute truth. And, you know, the words that came out of my mouth were an F of edifying. <laughs> say, I thought you said F. <laughs> <laughs> edifying at all, Joe. And it was like, I, I can't believe we just heard the word and then this this happens. And so mm, I've yeah. been kind of thinking it's good. about those things that, that he said about being kinder. So the very first thought that, that came to me is I thought that, and, and I know you guys are probably more spiritual than I am, yeah. but I, <laughs> I thought... <laughs> Okay, so if I'm saying things under my breath or I just have those thoughts in my mind and I don't actually speak them, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, That's oh, you know, the Lord really dealt me with, on that with me. It was like, okay, so I may not say it out loud. The, nor- the Lord knows what I'm thinking. The devil may not know what I'm thinking, but he knows you know, there's my heart just because of mm-hmm. things that I've done, mm-hmm. you know, in the past. And so you have to continue to clean those things up. So I got to thinking as I was driving again, though, and this was like yesterday and the day before, and I've been on the road quite a bit lately. And I was just thinking about those things. And I thought, you know, I do a lot of things in my head. And some of those things, and, and I don't want you to go to, I don't, I want you to hear what I'm saying, not what I'm not saying is but you know how those thoughts will enter your head and they aren't very good thoughts. They're not, mm-hmm. not that they're impure thoughts, but they just aren't thoughts that we should be having about other people, mm-hmm. about things that are happening. And I thought, man, I got to stop even doing that. Mm-hmm. I have to do a cleansing yeah. of my heart. And the word tells us mm-hmm. about that. So I thought, okay, so if I'm going to do a cleansing... And I'm driving in my car, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do this cleanse. I'm, I'm, so I'm sitting in the car, driving, and in my head I'm saying, oh, Lord, you know, just help me with my heart issues, and I need to change this stuff. I'm saying this. In my, and I thought, mm-hmm. that is so wrong. I have got to speak these things out. Mm-hmm. 
So the devil can hear them. Yeah. And he knows my position and my heart and where he's at. And it goes back to, uh, Joe, um, what you spoke about last week is that trials will come. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to that because we know that once we make a stand, once we make a choice, those trials, those tribulations, those things are going to come, and then we have a choice. Yeah. And so I was thinking about all of those things, thinking about the things going on at Adoration Church and how God is, is moving in the midst of a group of people. And I thought, okay, you know, I, I typically, I listen to, you know, like Dutch Sheets, give them 15. And I would encourage you to listen to Dutch Sheets. Yeah. If you haven't listened to Dutch Sheets, listen to him. Yeah. Because that will really get your day going. Mm -hmm. It really does help. You know, we're here and you think, well, where do these guys come up with this stuff? I'm, I'm talking to those that are listening to us right now. It's typically, we don't just come up here and say, okay, we're going to talk about this. Typically, mm -hmm. we spend time in the Word. We spend time in prayer. Yeah. We spend time listening to other prophetic people or things that are rel relevant to what we're doing. So we're okay. doing all of these things. I mean, so there's a culmination of hearing God's voice um, in the spirit. What is God saying to me? Our prayer time and our prayer closet and also other people's words and then trying to connect all the dots. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we come to this. And so yeah. I was doing that today and this morning and the lord had given me a vision a vision but i said lord i'm not sure where to go with this because he gave it the vision to me when ken roberts was speaking and i wasn't sure where to go with it i said i'm just going to hold on to this i'm not going to share it we'll see what happens and it was just a short vision but i think it was you know pertinent and i think it was the lord so i'll toss that out there. But I listened to uh, Dutch Sheets today, and it talked again about the mountain. Yeah. Yep. And about getting to the top of the mountain. And to those that have gone before us, so we can climb up the mountain. Yeah. And then I went back mm -hmm. to what David said, and if you listen to Dutch's words, I went back even to what David said before is the generation before us, or David said, we want our ceiling to be the next generation's floor. Mm -hmm. Well, Dutch touched on that today. He said that generation has gone before us. They stopped at a point where they're supposed to stop, but it's our starting point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's, that's really critical. Yeah. You know, and what we're trying to do is we have to realize that where we're at, we're there for a reason. It's where we're starting, but it's where others that have gone before, mm -hmm. you know, they have paved that path. Yeah. They have dug the ground. They, you know, took obstacles out of the way so that we could have a starting point. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about all those things as well today. And that's when I, you know, I talked to you guys. I said, hey, just listen to Dutch mm -hmm. today and, and what you think. Yeah. And you know, it was interesting what Dutch shared. You know, he talked about they got to that point and then there was, and I'm not going to give you exactly what it is because you really should listen yeah. to the podcast that he has. But, you know, he talked about the snake at the very end of where uh, the generation before it had stopped. Mm -hmm. And it was a large snake and they couldn't, they didn't think that they could remove it. Yeah. And remember that, yeah. what he was saying? And so he said then finally they took the, the word or the sword of the Lord, got out of the vehicle that they were in, and they were able to chop the head off. And they said the snake mm. completely deflated. They said they could actually hear the air go out. Mm. And then they were able to move forward and go to the top of the hill or to where God yeah. was taking them, mm. you know, that, that generation. So... I thought about that, and they talked about the, the vehicles, and they turned around and they looked at the vehicles, and they said, what are these vehicles? That we don't understand what these vehicles are. We don't know what they are. And finally, somebody said to them, they're called, did he say, trailblazers. Trail trail, yeah. So here they're, they're making a path and making a way for the generation behind to come behind them. 
and then to continue where they're at, where God has called them, their destiny, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. their appointed time for the next generation to come up and have their starting point. Yeah. So that's the responsibility that we have, yeah. is we have to fulfill and we have to reach that place that God has called us to for this time and this purpose mm -hmm. that we're in. And so I think sometimes, just because of the things that God is doing in our midst, and, and I'm a watcher of people. Are you guys? Yeah. So yeah. who isn't? <laughs> I watch people, but I watch them actions, words, mm -hmm. and how they conduct themselves. Yeah. When things get rough and things get heavy and thing, there's a load that's put on them. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, God's applying pressure. You know, we, we automatically mm -hmm. assume mm -hmm. that it's the enemy that's applying the pressure. But a lot of times God applies a pressure so we move forward and we don't stay behind. Yeah. Do you guys want to add anything here? Mm -hmm. or do you want me to just to keep going? It's good so far. <laughs> I'm waiting for this vision because yeah. we haven't even heard about this yet. So, so this is a surprise vision. I'm gonna surprise. So I'm thinking about all this, and of course I've got this vision that the Lord gave me, and I, I didn't even share this with my wife. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Dana. And by the way, I do have to say this, that in two days it's Donna's birthday. Yes, it is. And she's going to be 40 this year. Ooh. 40. How many times? Well, uh, again. Again. Okay. again. So we just say again. again. I love you, honey. <laughs> so, happy birthday, by the way. So, I, you know, I'm going through this. I'm watching people. And as I've been watching people with everything that God is doing, because things are moving so fast, so quick, um, I, I'm seeing the spiritual activity. I'm seeing healings that are taking place. But... I'm also seeing where the enemies coming in mm -hmm. as well in those yeah. areas. I'm seeing discouragement come into people because people are getting tired and wore out. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to say we shouldn't be like that because he that goes before us, you mm -hmm. know, he takes everything upon him mm -hmm. until we take it off, right? Yeah. So I'm watching all this stuff, and you know, I know people. I don't want you to take this the wrong way because I know people get tired. I mean, I get tired. But for me, for myself, the things that I, that I've been seeing, I've been seeing the discouragement. I've been seeing the the little things. You know how the little foxes get in and they try mm -hmm. to steal and you know take away from what's going on. I'm watching this, and I'm going, oh my goodness. All of a sudden, I was watching that, and I was really encouraged by it. Because I thought, we're doing something that the enemy doesn't want to happen, so he's trying to throw everything at us mm -hmm. that he can. And the thing that he's throwing at us is if we can have, if I can have conflict with you, or I can have conflict with you that would push us apart instead of bring us together, the enemy has got a battle that he's won. Yeah. And so we have to fight with everything that is inside of us to bring and draw us closer together and instead of allowing the enemy to push us apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I see that. I see that in the body. I see that in, you know, in some of the, the people are saying, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. Because God is pushing mm -hmm. us further of them. We don't think, I don't think I can go any further. I guarantee you we can mm -hmm. because of what he's given us. I mm -hmm. guarantee you that he can do that, that he's going to continue to bring us up the mountain, but we have to do it together. Yeah. If we go back and yeah. we look at the, yeah. the visions, uh, the dreams that we've had in the past, those that have sent in, those that have sent in words, it all revolves around unity within sure. the body of Christ. Yeah. And so that means every part of the body of Christ must, in fact, become one. Mm -hmm. And that means even though, I, I, I have to say this because I cannot give anybody an offense. I 
physically am not capable. I cannot give you an offensive, but you can certainly take one. Yeah. And I don't want you to. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear mm -hmm. what we're saying is that we have an opportunity to move past and forward any place that anyone has ever gone before in the Lord. To see things in a different and in a new way. Yeah. I think that, you know, God is going to show us there's going to be healings, there's going to be manifestations mm -hmm. in the Spirit mm -hmm. that if we allow God to do it and we take ourselves out of it, yeah. this place is going to blow up. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I every time I think about this and what God's doing, because if you if you're listening to anything prophetic, if you're listening to anything that the prophets are saying, the apostles are saying, the teachers are saying, the pastors are saying, the evangelists are saying, mm -hmm. the one point is revival, a renewal is coming. And it's communal. Yeah. It's a community revival that is happening in our midst. We have to be able, and I'm, I'm, I'm so passionate about this, we have to be able to come together and put everything aside, everything that may bother me about you, Joe, or you know, I might bother you and something. We have to put our differences aside. We have to take those offenses and we have to throw them, put them at the foot of the cross and leave them there. That's the only way we're going to get to the top of the mountain that God has called, excuse me, has called us to. For this time, for this season.